Alright, what's happening people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Jan. I hope you're all doing well and boy, what a nerdy video I've got for you guys today. Yeah, I'm going back to the sort of statistical metric side of things, giving you numbers, which I can kind of see a little bit as evidence of why things could possibly go well. Yes, indeed, in uncertain times without football being played, no one actually getting to watch the beautiful game, I wanted to compile something that can give Chelsea fans hope and positive thoughts moving forwards and preparing themselves for football to eventually restart yet again. Today's video is on Chelsea's wingers for next season. Wingers that we know will be ch playing for Chelsea. Christian Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech. Obviously, it's just the agreement at the moment between Ajax and Chelsea for Ziyech to join, but for the sake of this video, we're talking about him being a Chelsea player. Now, we're speculating these two players are going to be the starting wingers for Chelsea Football Club going into the next campaign when it does indeed start, and also be speculating, is this the good enough, is it good enough quality to win the Premier League? Now, to get into this and the nitty gritty, what I've done is I've done a comparison with Liverpool's wingers Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah. Champions elect the best performing team this season that's just ending. Is it going to end? No one knows. Those two players essentially, both very good in their own right, high scorers, high performers offensively. I'm going to be pulling up the numbers and I'm going to be comparing Christian Pulisic with Sadio Mane and I'm going to be comparing Hakim Ziyech to Mohamed Salah. So both the respective flanks, Mane on the left, Salah on the right, Pulisic on the left, Ziyech on the right. And I'm going to be talking about not just their numbers comparatively, but how Chelsea can use the difference in dynamics of Pulisic and Ziyech to win the Premier League. Oh yeah! Nerdy numbers, but interesting, and I hope you'll agree. And if you like my content I've been producing throughout this sort of isolation period, why not subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not already done so? Come show me the support, hit the bell notifications icon, why not like the video, follow me on the socials. All right, let's get into it. So I'm using two different comparison methods in this video. I'm going to be using the XG slash XA metric for the comparison between Pulisic and Mane. For all you people who don't understand that out there, that's expected goals and expected assists. I got that from understat.com, which is a very reputable and interesting comparison, comparison website. I sound like I'm selling insurance stats website essentially and show you where they're at there and because the aero divisie is not actually available on understat.com i've used whoscored.com for the comparison between ziesh and mohammed salah which actually looks at loads of different stats and metrics and we're going to compare the two players and then from there i'll probably talk about why they actually are very complementary to each other ziesh and pulisic and if both in form and integrated well into this chelsea side Chelsea could have a lot to look forward to and I kind of just want to say now I made this video because these are the players Chelsea are looking to have moving forwards without the purchase of Jadon Sancho or another elite winger or even just buying back Jeremy Boga. Chelsea will need backup rotational wingers, yes indeed and a striker obviously is another story entirely but I wanted to talk about the offensive flanks for this video. So let's start with the Captain America himself, Christian Pulisic versus Sadio Mane. Now obviously, Pulisic's still new to the country, the league, the team. He's younger than Sadio Mane, and Sadio Mane has long been settled in the Premier League and indeed Liverpool as well after Southampton. So you have to take that all into account. Now I'm gonna pop up the graphs now from Understat in front of me so you can look at the metrics for both Pulisic and Mane in the Premier League this campaign. Now, although these graphs show all different kinds of numbers, I do want to focus on the XG and the XA, which is obviously expected goals per 90 minutes and the expected assists per 90 minutes. I'm going to combine the two and total up to what that comes to. So Pulisic's expected goals and assists per 90 minutes comes to 0.55. Now, for someone that's a winger attacking midfielder, 0.55 is a very impressive statistic indeed that's very very promising from a player who's sort of coming in and out only got into the team in a decent run of form for one 
certain period. Very impressive from Christian Pulisic, and he's only just behind Tammy Abraham for Chelsea. He's been a huge miss in his absence, and remember, he's not a striker, he's a dribbling winger. Now, Sadio Mane's expected goals and assists per 90 minutes is 0.62. So that's 0.07 more than Christian Pulisic, which is not that much at all if you're thinking about everything they're doing in the Premier League. Now, Mane has arguably been the most effective winger when they've had to call on someone in that Liverpool side to make the difference. And we know he's very, very settled with the chemistry in that starting 11 and plays with the front three very well indeed. And of course, he's very highly rated. And like I said, I would like to reiterate, very settled in the team. So let's get rid of these graphics for a moment. So very similar in terms of offensive output, but one has had a long time to settle without injury in the team to become part of that Liverpool system, whereas Christian Pulisic had to really go through some struggles when he first came in. He was out of the team, he had a big price tag. People were saying he's the Ed and Hazard replacement, all that kind of pressures for a young man who was only 20 years old when, when arriving at Chelsea Football Club. Things were a little bit different for Mane, but obviously he settled and become an excellent player. Now, they are different, because Pulisic is more of a ball-carrying dribbler. He's actually quite close to Eden Hazard. I think Chelsea were looking for a dribbler when they identified Pulisic to come in. Not necessarily as an Eden Hazard replacement, but as someone who can do something similar. So, a lot younger, yet to really find his feet at Chelsea Football Club, yet putting out very similar offensive numbers than superstar Liverpool player Sadio Mane. Now, let's move on to Mohamed Salah and Hakim Ziyech. Now, before before I show you these numbers, of course, I want to caveat this with these are Premier League numbers and against Eredivisie numbers. The quality of opposition is very, very different, but still, you can only play what's in front of you, and I wanted to show you the numbers and metrics regardless. So up on the screen now, I've put the defensive numbers, the offensive numbers, and the passing numbers of the comparisons between Salah and Hakim Ziyech. As you can see, and pretty much every single metric, Hakim Ziyech completely walks all over Mohamed Salah. Not only, Salah scored a few more goals in the league, but in terms of creativity, defensive ability, passing ability, and other offensive metrics, it's all about Hakim Ziyech over Mohamed Salah. Ziyech is a little bit more of a provider, he gets loads of assists, but of course can score goals. Probably a better dead ball specialist than Mohamed Salah as well, and has a sweeter left foot, of course. Both of them have goals and assists in the Champions League this season, which is obviously the highest level of competition, showing you that Ziyech can play the highest level we've seen now this season, or this campaign that's just finishing in the Champions League. And here's something really interesting what I want to tell you about now, so let's get rid of the graphics. Goals and assists per 90 across their respective leagues and the Champions League combined. So, Mohamed Salah over the Champions League and the Premier League has played a decent amount more minutes than Ziyech has in the Eredivisie and the Champions League. Between these two competitions, Hakim Ziyech has 24 goal involvements, and that works out to a goal involvement once every 88 minutes, which of course is an elite return for a centre forward, let alone a winger slash wide forward. Across both competitions, Mohamed Salah has 28 goal involvements, and this works out to a goal involvement every 107 minutes, which of course is still a very good return for a winger, but it's nowhere near the brilliant return of Hakim Ziyech, which is just quite frankly an incredible return from the Moroccan. So I just wanted to put that out there and offer some perspective of the offensive numbers of both Christian Pulisic and Hakim Ziyech against Liverpool, which is arguably been the best team in Europe this season, their elite, highly respected wingers. So I wanted to show you the numbers and the potential of Chelsea's wide forwards going forward in this sort of evolution of the Frank Lampard team. Now, I do want to talk about as well how different they are, because Christian Pulisic is very, very different to Hakim Ziyech. Christian Pulisic is a ball carrier. Well, they both can dribble, but he likes dribbling with the ball very close to his feet, playing in tight spaces, playing between the lines, and getting forward on that left flank. But also, what makes Pulisic very different to Ziyech, he runs in behind. He likes to play on the shoulder, much like a striker, 
use his pace, get in behind and one on one finish. We've seen him do that a few times. Whereas Ziyech likes to drop deep, play make, go into the number 10, cut in on that wicked left foot of his and do his Iron Robin thing of just scoring worldies on his left foot after cutting in. Like I said, as well as also making a few more key passes and being a bit more of a deep creative player, getting more assists, etc. The fact how they're both incredibly different in terms of player profile benefits Chelsea greatly. They're not just both putting in crosses, they both ask different questions of the opposition and even if they're swapping flanks, it's going to be hard for an opponent to pin down what exactly to do when these offensive players have so much different in their locker and they both can offer different skill sets. That's massively important for Chelsea moving forwards and they do maybe make you think that Chelsea could do some serious, serious work with those two starting on the flanks the next campaign when football eventually does start again. And provided Tammy Abraham finds form or Chelsea buy another striker or, you know, or new midfielders come in, Chelsea's starting 11 could be seriously deadly. And that's without any new super, super mega money signings, maybe just a left back and who knows one other. People are talking and asking for a Chelsea overhaul, but if you have Tellers at left back, Rhys James at right back, a couple of good centre backs, you know, suddenly things are looking very different with a bit of settled time and coaching. Anyway, what do you guys think? I wanted to do this video and nerd out a little bit with the numbers, but I'm keen on getting your thoughts and opinions on the video itself. Did you enjoy it? What do you think of these two players? Do you think they could be lethal? Do Chelsea still need a new winger? I personally think those two alone is a very interesting uh, proposition. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and if you've enjoyed the content, please do like the video. Support me by subscribing if you're new, uh, following me on the socials as well. Enjoy the football that's not happening at the moment and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby